The new general public license is a widely used free software license, which guarantees and uses the freedoms to run, study, share, and modify the software. Software that allows these rights is called free software and, if the software is copyleft,ed requires those rights to be retained. The GPL demands both. The license was originally written by Richard Stallman of the Free Software Foundation for the new project. In other words, the GPL grants the recipients of a computer program the rights of the free software definition and uses copyleft to ensure the freedoms are preserved. Whenever the work is distributed, even when the work is changed or added to, the GPL is a copyleft license, which means that derived works can only be distributed under the same license terms. This is in distinction to permissive free software licenses, of which the BSD licenses and the MIT license are the standard examples. GPL was the first copyleft license for general use. Prominent free software programs licensed under the GPL include the Linux kernel and the new compiler collection. Some other free software programs are dual licensed under multiple licenses, often with one of the licenses being the GPL. Historically, the GPL license family has been one of the most popular software licenses in the FOSS domain. David A. Wheeler argues that the copyleft provided by the GPL was crucial to the success of Linux-based systems, giving the programmers who contributed to the kernel the assurance that their work would benefit the whole world and remain free, rather than being exploited by software companies that would not have to give anything back to the community. On 29 June 2007, the third version of the license was released to address some perceived problems with the second version that were discovered during its long time usage. To keep the license up to date, the GPL license includes an optional any later version clause, allowing users to choose between the original terms or the terms in new versions as updated by the FSF. Developers can omit it when licensing their software. For instance, the Linux kernel is licensed under GPL v2 without the any later version clause. History The GPL was written by Richard Stallman in 1989 for use with programs released as part of the new project. The original GPL was based on a unification of similar licenses used for early versions of new Emacs, the new debugger and the new C compiler. These licenses contained similar provisions to the modern GPL, but were specific to each program, rendering them incompatible, despite being the same license. Stallman's goal was to produce one license that could be used for any project, thus making it possible for many projects to share code. The second version of the license, version 2, was released in 1991. Over the following 15 years, members of the free software community became concerned over problems in the GPL v2 license that could let someone exploit GPL license software in ways contrary to the license's intent. These problems included TIVOization, compatibility issues similar to those of the Afro general public license, and patent deals between Microsoft and distributors of free and open source software, which some viewed as an attempt to use patents as a weapon against the free software community. Version 3 was developed to attempt to address these concerns and was officially released on 29 June 2007. Version 1 Version 1 of the new GPL, released on 25 February 1989 prevented what were then the two main ways that software distributors restricted the freedoms that define free software. The first problem was that distributors may publish binary files only, executable, but not readable or modifiable by humans. To prevent this, GPL v1 said that any vendor distributing binaries must also make the human-readable source code available under the same licensing terms. The second problem was that distributors might add restrictions, either to the license, or by combining the software with other software that had other restrictions on distribution. The union of two sets of restrictions would apply to the combined work, thus adding unacceptable restrictions. 
To prevent this, GPLv1 said that modified versions, as a whole, had to be distributed under the terms in GPLv1. Therefore, software distributed under the terms of GPLv1 could be combined with software under more permissive terms, as this would not change the terms under which the whole could be distributed. However, software distributed under GPLv1 could not be combined with software distributed under a more restrictive license, as this would conflict with the requirement that the whole be distributable under the terms of GPLv1. Version 2 According to Richard Stallman, the major change in GPLv2 was the liberty or death clause, as he calls it, Section 7. This section says that if a license imposes restrictions that prevent distributing GPL-covered software in a way that respects other users' freedom, the developer may not distribute it at all. The hope is that this makes it less tempting for companies to use patent threats to require fees from free software developers. By 1990, it was becoming apparent that a less restrictive license would be strategically useful for the C library and for software libraries that essentially did the job of existing proprietary ones. When version 2 of the GPL was released in June 1991, Therefore, a second license, the Library General Public License, was introduced at the same time and numbered with version 2 to show that both were complementary. The version numbers diverged in 1999 when version 2.1 of the LGPL was released, which renamed it the new Lesser General Public License to reflect its place in the philosophy. Version 3 In late 2005, the Free Software Foundation announced work on version 3 of the GPL. On 16 January 2006, the first discussion draft of GPL v3 was published, and the public consultation began. The public consultation was originally planned for 9 to 15 months but finally stretched to 18 months with four drafts being published. The official GPL v3 was released by FSF on 29 June 2007. GPL v3 was written by Richard Stallman, with legal counsel from Eben Moglen and the Software Freedom Law Center. According to Stallman, the most important changes are in relation to software patents, free software license compatibility the definition of source code and hardware restrictions on software modification. Other changes relate to internationalization, how license violations are handled, and how additional permissions can be granted by the copyright holder. It also adds a provision that strips digital rights management of its legal value, so people can break anything a court might recognize as DRM on GPL software without breaking laws like the DMCA. The public consultation process was coordinated by the Free Software Foundation with assistance from Software Freedom Law Center, Free Software Foundation Europe, and other free software groups. Comments were collected from the public via the gplv3.fsf.org web portal. That portal runs purpose-written software called STET. During the public consultation process, 962 comments were submitted for the first draft. By the end, a total of 2,636 comments had been submitted. The third draft was released on 28 March 2007. This draft included language intended to prevent patent-related agreements like the controversial Microsoft Novell Patent Agreement and restricts the anti-tivoization clauses to a legal definition of a user or consumer product. It also explicitly removed the section on geographical limitations whose probable removal had been announced at the launch of the public consultation. The fourth discussion draft, which was the last, was released on 31 May 2007. It introduced Apache License version 2.0 compatibility, clarified the role of outside contractors, and made an exception to avoid the perceived problems of a Microsoft Novell-style agreement, saying in section 11 paragraph 6 that, you may not convey a covered work if you are a party to an arrangement with a third party that is in the business of distributing software.
under which you make payment to the third party, based on the extent of your activity of conveying the work, and under which the third party grants to any of the parties who would receive the covered work from you. A discriminatory patent license, this aims to make future such deals ineffective. The license is also meant to cause Microsoft to extend the patent licenses it grants to Novell customers for the use of GPL v3 software to all users of that GPL v3 software. This is possible only if Microsoft is legally a conveyor of the GPL v3 software. Also, early drafts of GPL v3 let license Licenses add an afro like requirement that would have plugged the ASP loophole in the GPL. As there were concerns expressed about the administrative costs of checking code for this additional requirement, it was decided to keep the GPL and the afro license separated. Others, notably some high profile developers of the Linux kernel, for instance Linus Torvalds, Greg Crower, Hartman, and Andrew Morton commented to the mass media and made public statements about their objections to parts of discussion drafts 1 and 2. The kernel developers referred to GPL v3 draft clauses regarding DRM, tivoization, patents and additional restrictions, and warned of balkanization of the open source universe. Linus Torvalds, who decided to not adopt the GPL v3 for the Linux kernel, reiterated his criticism even years later. GPL v3 improves compatibility with several open source software licenses such as Apache License, version 2.0, and the new Afro General Public License, which GPL v2 could not be combined with, but on the downside. GPL v3 software can only be combined in share code with GPL v2 software if the used GPL v2 license has the optional or later clause and the software is upgraded to GPL v3, while the GPL v2 or any later version clause is considered by FSF as the most common form of licensing GPL v2 software. For example, Toybox developer Rob Landley described it as a lifeboat clause. Software projects licensed with the optional or later clause include the new project, while a prominent example without the clause is the Linux kernel. The final version of the license text was published on the 29th of June 2007.2016 Terms and Conditions. The terms and conditions of the GPL must be made available to anybody receiving a copy of the work that has a GPL applied to it. Any licensee who adheres to the terms and conditions is given permission to modify the work, as well as to copy and redistribute the work or any derivative version. The licensee is allowed to charge a fee for this service, or do this free of charge. This latter point distinguishes the GPL from software licenses that prohibit commercial redistribution. The FSF argues that free software should not place restrictions on commercial use, and the GPL explicitly states that GPL works may be sold at any price. The GPL additionally states that a distributor may not impose further restrictions on the rights granted by the GPL. This forbids activities such as distributing of the software under a non-disclosure agreement or contract. Distributors under the GPL also grant a license for any of their patents practiced by the software to practice those patents in GPL software. The fourth section for version 2 of the license and the seventh section of version 3 require that programs distributed as pre-compiled binaries are accompanied by a copy of the source code, a written offer to distribute the source code via the same mechanism as the pre-compiled binary, or the written offer to obtain the source code that the user got when they received the pre-compiled binary under the GPL. The second section of version 2 and the fifth section of version 3 also require giving all recipients a copy of this license along with the program. Version 3 of the license allows making the source code available in additional ways in fulfillment of the seventh section. These include downloading source code from an adjacent network server or by peer-to-peer -peer transmission 
provided that is how the compiled code was available and there are clear directions on where to find the source code. The FSF does not hold the copyright for a work released under the GPL, unless an author explicitly assigns copyrights to the FSF. Only the individual copyright holders have the authority to sue when a license violation takes place. Use of licensed software Software under the GPL may be run for all purposes, including commercial purposes and even as a tool for creating proprietary software, for example when using GPL-licensed compilers. Users or companies who distribute GPL-licensed works may charge a fee for copies or give them free of charge. This distinguishes the GPL from shareware software licenses that allow copying for personal use but prohibit commercial distribution, or proprietary licenses where copying is prohibited by copyright law. The FSF argues that freedom respecting free software should also not restrict commercial use and distribution. The GPL explicitly states that GPL works may be sold at any price. In purely private use, with no sales and no distribution, the software code may be modified and parts reused without requiring the source code to be released. For sales or distribution, the entire source code need to be made available to end users, including any code changes and additions in that case. Copyleft is applied to ensure that end users retain the freedoms defined above. However, software running as an application program under a GPL licensed operating system such as Linux is not required to be licensed under GPL or to be distributed with source code availability. The licensing depends only on the used libraries and software components and not on the underlying platform. For example, if a program consists only of own original custom software, or is combined with source code from other software components, then the own custom software components need not be licensed under GPL and need not make their code available, even if the underlying operating system used is licensed under the GPL. Applications running on it are not considered derivative works. Only if GPLED parts are used in a program, then all other source code of the program needs to be made available under the same license terms. The new lesser general public license was created to have a weaker copy left than the GPL, in that it does not require own custom developed source code to be made available under the same license terms. Copy left the distribution rights granted by the GPL for modified versions of the work are not unconditional. When someone distributes a GPL, D work plus his, her own modifications, the requirements for distributing the whole work cannot be any greater than the requirements that are in the GPL. This requirement is known as copy left. It earns its legal power from the use of copyright on software programs. Because a GPL work is copyrighted, a licensee has no right to redistribute it, not even in modified form, except under the terms of the license. Conversely, if one distributes copies of the work without abiding by the terms of the GPL, he or she can be sued by the original author under copyright law. Copyleft thus uses copyright law to accomplish the opposite of its usual purpose. Instead of imposing restrictions, it grants rights to other people, in a way that ensures the rights cannot subsequently be taken away. It also ensures that unlimited redistribution rights are not granted, should any legal flaw be found in the copyleft statement. Many distributors of GPLED programs bundle the source code with the executables. An alternative method of satisfying the copyleft is to provide a written offer to provide the source code on a physical medium upon request. In practice, many GPLED programs are distributed over the Internet, and the source code is made available over FTP or HTTP. For Internet distribution, this complies with the license. Copyleft applies only when a person seeks to redistribute the program. Developers may make private modified versions with no obligation to divulge the modifications, as long as they don't distribute the modified software to anyone else. Note that copyleft applies only to the software, and not to its output. 
For example, a public web portal running a modified derivative of a GPLED content management system is not required to distribute its changes to the underlying software, because its output is not a derivative. There has been debate on whether it is a violation of the GPL to release the source code in obfuscated form, such as in cases in which the author is less willing to make the source code available. The consensus was that while unethical, it was not considered a violation. The issue was clarified when the license was altered with V2 to require that the preferred version of the source code be made available. License versus contract The GPL was designed as a license, rather than a contract. In some common law jurisdictions, the legal distinction between a license and a contract is an important one. Contracts are enforceable by contract law, whereas licenses are enforced under copyright law. However, this distinction is not useful in the many jurisdictions where there are no differences between contracts and licenses, such as civil law systems. Those who do not accept the GPL's terms and conditions do not have permission, under copyright law, to copy or distribute GPL licensed software or derivative works. However, if they do not redistribute the GPLD program, they may still use the software within their organization however they like, and works constructed by the use of the program are not required to be covered by this license. Alison Randall argued that the GPL v3 as a license is unnecessarily confusing for lay readers, and could be simplified while retaining the same conditions and legal force.